Villagers in Minecraft are made incredibly overpowered when combined with curing discounts and auto breeders, so I'll show you how to do both of those in this villager system and zombification guide. So how do you actually get a zombie villager? Well, zombie villagers are found sometimes at night, and also in abandoned villages, which are only 2% of villages. But these hostile mobs converted from villagers are basically just as deadly as a zombie. But the big thing you want to do to actually use a zombie villager is to cure it, as once you've cured the villager, it will be very thankful towards you that it's no longer a zombie, and so will offer you great discounts on trades. So let's cure these zombie villagers here. And doing this is fairly easy, you want a splash potion of weakness, you don't have to level up the time on this if you don't want to. Throw that at the zombies, right click on them with a golden apple. Now you want to trap these zombie villagers individually, as if they're not individually trapped, then they'll just re-zombify each other. Something also important to note is that if they are in a place where they have daylight above them, or they could have daylight above them of course, like let's say if you found these at night, you want to make sure to cover above them until after they cure, because then when the sun rises you won't have to worry about them instantly burning up and your zombie villager being wasted. And something I really find interesting is that this process of curing zombie villagers actually has an entire structure that's purpose is to teach you how to do this. And that structure is the igloo, able to be found in snowy biomes. In Bedrock Edition, zombie villagers cannot despawn, but in Java Edition they can, and so how do we keep these mobs from disappearing on us when they're so important? Well, the first thing to know is that zombie villagers only despawn if you've never traded with them. Personally, I prefer working with zombie villagers that I've never traded with, because then if they die it doesn't matter, but as well as that, I can put them into any profession I want after they've been zombified. So because of that, something you want to do is either stay within a very close radius of these mobs when they're curing so that they do not despawn, or what you can do is you can give them an item or you can name them. Now if you're late game and let's say you have a whole bunch of name tags from a previously zombified librarian villager, and by the way if you want to learn about all the different villager trades I have a video on that as well as a bunch of other villager guides and there is an i card on the screen right now for that if you want to check them out. So what we can do is we can name these, let's say we've just named these villager. What we can also do is that about 50% of this type of mob can pick up items, so not all of them. It looks like none of these have that ability, but sometimes they do. So you can zombify and cure villagers, but how much of a true discount do you get out of it? Well, one zombification gives you minus five that you have to pay for any standard trade that does not involve certain special items. So for instance, with this paper here, it's a little bit more than minus five right now because of initial thankfulness, but after that wears off, this will be 19 paper for one emerald because we zombified once. This villager has been zombified twice. However, you may notice this book trade is down to only one emerald instead of down to four emeralds. And the reason why is that special items basically have even more that's discounted off of them. So for only one zombification, you have 20 emeralds taken off the price. For two zombifications, you have 40 emeralds. So let's say this book right here was 41 emeralds, it would still be down to only one emerald right now. And the list of items that are in that special group are things like armor, tools, weapons, shields, fishing rods, bells, also maps, saddles, horse armor, and of course enchanted books. Sort of these unstackable special items. This villager has been zombified three times, and although you cannot see it, it has minus 15 off of its normal trades, and minus 16. 60 off of all of its other trades, and now this librarian has been zombified four times, which gives us a book discount of negative 80, which basically means that there is literally no price here that could be charged that will not go down to one, and the other standard trades are minus 20, and for the final we have minus 25, and it's a good thing this has the paper trade so we can see that. This is down to only one emerald, because it's technically negative 25, and with special items it technically would be negative 100, but it doesn't actually matter considering the fact that no price can be even at negative 80. So those are what you actually get from the zombifications, and you'll always want to use that math of negative 5 on normal trades, negative 20 per level on the other trades. And I'd love to hear in the comments which villager do you zombify first. Now on to the part of the video where I show you how to make an auto breeder, as well as an auto zombifier. This villager zombifier I completely designed myself, and this villager breeder is a combination of a long-used community design in the general mechanics right here with the villagers carpets and the trap 
trapdoors. And then the part down here and the part up there is something I designed myself. So we'll start with the first part, how to build the auto breeder. And what you're going to need is the supplies in this box and in this box. We're going to start with four beds of any color, four trapdoors of any style, four carpets of any type, four slabs of any type, a fence of any type, a lever, 25 building blocks of any type, but I would suggest using glass just so it looks cool, two building blocks of any type, a stair of any type, a honey block, two other trapdoors, these can be in the same or different style, whatever you want. Then you want two chests, a dispenser, a hopper, two redstone dust, a couple powered rails, some dirt for temporary blocks or whatever else you want to use. You want to have as many mine carts as you can possibly get your hands on, so definitely more than one. Ideally enough to fill up the double chest, dispenser, and hopper. You also want a pressure plate, a sign, a water bucket, and some scaffolding. So the first thing you want to do is dig down once here. Then dig a pattern something like this, and this will give us an area to place a dispenser right here. We're also going to place a honey block in this little divided area here. And we're going to grab this hopper, place it into this dropper, and take two powered rails and put them down here. And also temporarily we're just going to break a couple blocks here so that we can see where we're working later on. Now grab your double chest and place it over this hopper so the contents will flow into the dispenser. And you can place as many minecarts as you have into this chest, so ideally this is full with as many as possible as we're going to need one minecart per villager. Now you want to place a block on top of this rail here and a rail right here so this bends and put a couple more rails leading this direction then put another rail on top of here and break that rail so that this is going upwards and this is going upwards but they're not actually facing each other they're sort of offset now grab this oak pressure plate and put it on top of the building block that you've chosen and put your other building block on top of the other rail there and place two redstone dust one on top of here and one on top of there now grab out your glass and surround this on all four sides so that there is a one block space with the honey and also surround this upper area here with the pressure plate on all sides with glass like this except for this side place glass here which looks like it cuts off the redstone but it does not even placing glass right up here which is where the rail sort of goes through and you can place two glass here which will connect this area up to here take your stair of whatever type and those two trap doors and place them on either side of the stair and flip them up like like this to sort of make a chair. Now place a glass block on top of here and place a sign down here next to the honey block and put water inside of this sort of chair we made and you notice the water goes over here. And then we'll basically make all of this go up a layer so we'll just go around here like this make this go here and here and we'll also have a glass block on top of this redstone and now you want to place one on top of these three put a temporary block and place two over here then break the temporary block and that is all the glass placing done take your four slabs and put them on top here like this and grab your four beds and with those beds place them all on here then facing inward place trap doors on every single side of this and also place carpets on the corners we're going to get this oak fence and place it on the slab you want to place the six scaffolding and that's going to go up right parallel to that and put a lever on the other side of this rail Flick that and you'll notice this will always be powered on. Now all the items for the food dispenser and villager holding area. We'll need two observers, some of the powered and unpowered rails, a dropper, some building blocks, a bunch of bread, two redstone, two chests, a hopper, two other building blocks. We'll need some redstone torches, a lever, and some building blocks that are temporary like that dirt. Place a dirt block on top of the trap door right there, then get on top of that dirt block and get your two building blocks and place one on top of there and one next to it with two pieces of redstone on top of both of those. Then grab your observers, have one of them facing this direction and grab the other one and have it facing the other direction so that they're both next to each other and turning this into a redstone clock. Now we want to grab this lever and put it on the side of the block here and flick that on. Now jump down into the villager area and place this dropper facing downwards towards that fence so that all the bread is directly dispensed towards the villagers. And grab this hopper and place it into the side of that dropper and grab your two chests and place them on top of this hopper. You don't actually need the hopper and the chest if you 
don't want to stock a whole lot of bread, but I would suggest stocking as much bread as possible. We put this in and we unflick the lever. We can have this part be working already. We just need to grab the temporary blocks here and that is the breeder auto food part done. And the next step of course is to actually get villagers inside of this. Because of the beds, a good trick is to bring them here during the night on a minecart. Then when it's bedtime, they'll see the beds, they'll sleep in them. And when you break the temporary blocks around here and then you sleep, when they get up, they'll just appear in the center here like that. So that's going to save you a lot of time. Anyway, now that the villagers are up there, we just need to make the area where they can sort of sit while we're not needing them. So you want to place down all these powered rails in a row that are still being powered by this lever to form sort of a ramp. Then once they go off the ramp, they're just going to go into a long series of spiraling rails that are unpowered. So we'll just place this much and place a whole bunch of unpowered rails in a row. The reason for this is that they basically act as brakes if they're not powered. And those redstone torches you can use to power this rail if it's longer depending on how your system is set up. You could also use it to power right here. Although I personally would suggest putting a lever here or really not having a lever at all as the idea behind this is that you just kind of push them through here to the next area so that they do not get out of there themselves. Anyway that's the entire breeding area done. Now on to the zombifying area which is also incredibly important. So for this zombifier with automatic potion dispensing as well as automatic golden apple dispensing so you can really easily use this. We need the supplies in this shulker box. You want three droppers, a golden pressure plate, it doesn't have to be golden but just cosmetically it looks really good. You want 16 glass or some other block but glass is best. You want 12 trap doors of any type, 6 building blocks of any type, 6 slabs of any type, 7 redstone dust, 3 levers, a redstone repeater, 3 hoppers, two chests, six powered rails, as many golden apples as you can get, as many splash potions of weakness as you can get, about 32 rails, but it doesn't really matter, these are sort of just to connect this to the rest of the system, and then optionally you want three lime glazed terracotta or some other sort of green block or just a block that can really easily mark out things, as well as an item frame and an arrow, so these three are optional. So let's grab all the items here and build it. So you want to start by getting some unpowered rails and just sort of putting them in a line, then a block away from it, you want to dig down once, then twice, and then you want to dig basically an L shape here, so it's going to go one, then two, three, and up to a total of six blocks long. Then fill in these two blocks here, so we have one, and then divided by that one, two, three, four, five. Place down two droppers going upwards here, and we're going to get ourselves these three hoppers, place them into this lower dropper, and from that lower dropper you want to break this block here, and place a double chest there. We can now seal this up. Also grab a redstone repeater, place it into the bottom dropper, and place a redstone dust there. Cover both of these up put a lever on top of this and you can notice when we flick this that dropper is going to turn on. Grab out our marking out blocks. You could use anything you want. You don't even need these. I've just found when you're laying out the villagers it definitely makes it easier and less to think about. So place down them here and here on either side of the dropper right here and then place another one over here and even though there will be a villager all the way over here the splash potion will still be able to get to it. Now break the rail here and place the six powered rails across here and we can grab this lever and place it sort of diagonal to this lever so if we're flicking it on the rails will turn on but this dropper will not turn on which is very important. Then looking at these two levers go right here and go one block over and break this and we're going to put inside of here as many golden apples as we have. That seems a little better. And then basically on top of that we're just going to put a lightweighted pressure plate. And I made a small mistake here. You want the dispenser to not be where the golden apples are. You want it to be the dropper there. And you want the dispenser to be right here where the powered rail is. So just simply put the dispenser up there. And then we'll just put that back as it was. Take the 16 glass that you have and place two of them one block away from the last powered rail on this side next to the chest. Also we can place a couple standard rails over here as this would eventually lead to your villager trading hall. We're going to grab this glass here and place two of them also one block away from the powered rails. Now we'll place glass two blocks tall, one block away from that to sort of make this small glass wall around here. Grab your trapdoors of whatever type and place them in a row like this and flip them all up. Now grab some temporary blocks and put them inside there like this 
and put your birch trap doors or whatever type you have on top of those, flip those down, and once they're flipped down we can simply break the dirt that's up here, except for don't break the final piece as we'll put a slab on top of there and continue the slabs going across here so it's a little sealed compartment like that. We can now break this final temporary block and put this smooth stone blocks or whatever you have on this side of it so that they're directly above these trapdoors. Then grab your redstone dust and put it on top of these solid blocks and also get your lever and put it over here. So if we flick this on we can have those trapdoors go up and down which will enable the zombie to kill the villagers. And for the final touches I like putting a item frame right here with an arrow in it because then I can remember how many times they're zombified as in this design they stay in the same position no matter how many times they're zombified. And in this back chest we want to fill that with as many splash potions of weakness as possible. And that is now all the way filled up. For the final step we just need to get our zombie in here. Now of course getting your zombie into the villager zombifier can be a bit difficult as they can easily burn to death. If you're anywhere near a desert biome husks are great for that as they can survive during the day but there are some things you can do like for instance giving them a splash potion of fire resistance or giving them a helmet to wear. Now some mobs can pick up items, some can't. If your zombie can pick up items, be sure to give it an item to pick up, as then you don't have to name tag it. But if it can't, then you have to name tag this zombie or husk, so it doesn't despawn. And now we're going to have that zombie there forever that will terrorize the villagers when we need it to. And that is the zombifier done. Now basically, how do you use the zombifier and the breeder? I'll explain that right now. With the breeder, you just want to turn this on and give the villagers a whole bunch of food. The villagers will randomly go into love mode at some point. In fact, yeah, they're going to love mode right now. Then we can get a baby villager. And once they've bred, the baby villager will fall down here and get stuck on the honey block. Now, very, very rarely they will not, and they will just go over here. But then they'll be picked up by the minecart in a baby form anyway, and they'll just grow up in this looping area. As when they do grow up, they'll slide out of there, be picked up by the minecart, and go into the trap but only once they've grown up. Alright, so that'll work itself automatically, slowly filling this up with adult villagers. What you want to do is you want to push the villager to work with on the powered rails here. Turn these powered rails on and give it a push. You'll notice when it goes on the unpowered powered rails here, it gets stuck, sort of like brakes. So our goal is just to slide it onto the last slot here that has the glazed terracotta. And now we'll get the next villager. Pushing the second villager to the center one here doesn't have to be fully centered, just somewhat. And now for the third villager. And it gets pushed there. And we can just slightly adjust its position back onto the first green one. So we're going to go over this gold pressure plate three times to get our three golden apples. So now when we decide to zombify them, we'll just open this up. And that zombie will now target those. But if it sees us, it won't. So we're going to walk behind the back here so it cannot see us through the glass blocks. Now that they're all zombified, you want to flick this lever once. And that will give them one dose of weakness. Now with our golden apples, which we're going to dispense here, just right click on each one of them like that and they will start to cure. And you can just right click on this once to mark that they're in their first cure. And now the three villagers have cured. And what we can do if we want to make them go through another time to get better discounts, as of course this system makes it really easy, you just have to wait more or less. We can flick this up, go behind here again, and let the zombies attack those. But more or less, once they're zombified, you can just rinse and repeat the process. And let's say that that's now enough zombifications for us. All you have to do is flick this to turn the powered rail on, push them to the right there, and they will go on to what will eventually be your villager trading hall, now ready to be given whatever profession you want. And that's the entire villager system and zombification guide. If you could trade me a like for this video, that would be much appreciated, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!